Hey guys, today we're going to do an unboxing of an Intel NUC and set it up as well. So uh, this is kind of a fake video today because I've actually already opened this up here. And uh, so I'm just going to walk you through the process because I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, this product, I didn't even know this product existed. You know, originally I was looking for a second computer. I obviously have my, my, um, my Dell XPS 15 for my day to day work. And certainly it's, it's what I use when, when I travel. Um, but one of the things that I thought of is of course, my wife of course wants to watch movies and see all of our videos that we've uh, purchased online and stuff like that and if there's no computer in the house uh, sometimes that's a little difficult to do so I started looking I was originally thinking of a Mac mini but of course they're they're kind of cost prohibitive and I sort of thought there's got to be a Windows equivalent to that and then I discovered this product here the Intel NUC now this particular model I actually bought one before this and it wasn't very powerful enough but this one is the NUC 8 i3 BEH. And I chose this because it was a core processor. So it's an Intel core processor, in this case an i3. It's also advantageous. It's a tall configuration and has enough room for an SSD and a traditional SATA drive. And I also chose it because it was going to be compatible with some old accessories that I had laying around. So if you've seen my upgrading my Dell XPS video, you'll know that I had 16 gigabytes of RAM left over that were just sitting around not really doing anything. And that particular laptop came with this 512 gigabyte SSD. So I hung on to it and it's also going to be going into this. And actually, I have an old two terabyte hard drive that was previously in an external case that I was using, you know, again, for, for sharing media, um, you know, but from my laptop. So as soon as I went to Washington or Las Vegas or something like that, my wife couldn't access those files. So having uh, just this extra hard drive available, all that stuff is going to be compatible with this particular item. And uh, it's really reasonably priced. I will put a link in the description below so that you can see, uh, see it for yourself. So here's what comes in the box. Obviously the nook itself. This is four inches, I believe, is the exact measurement. So I'll just give you a quick little tour of it here. There's the back. So um, from this side over, we've got a uh, USB-C connector. We have two USB-A... 3.1 I guess is the 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 number but um, you know lightning fast USB if you will it's got an Ethernet port HDMI that's the power for the uh, the adapter that comes with it on either side there's venting of course for for air circulation and cooling this is a micro SD card slot which is kind of unusual uh, Ken Kensington lockdown here on the front um, we have uh, two SSDs. These are the uh, 3.0 or 3.1. I'm not sure what the number is. The orange one denotes that this, this one actually has power that's continuous. So even when this Intel Nook is turned off, you can use this as a charging port as well. There's a, a headphone jack or you could plug speakers into this. Uh, power is right here. Uh, they actually gave me the Intel Core i3 sticker separately and I placed it on here in advance and again more venting on this side there um, top is is clean there's no power buttons there so what you need in addition to the accessories I already showed you is uh, something like a small Phillips screwdriver to get at it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this up and set it up and I'm gonna try and share as much of this experience with you as possible I probably should have used a larger screwdriver for this. Once they're all unscrewed, you might need to pry it a little bit. And there is a connector here. I'm going to disconnect it 
two connectors actually uh, for the SATA port and hard drive bay, if you will. Let's see if I can successfully remove these cables. They're just on um, disconnect ports here that are right on the hard drive itself. I want to take them off to just show you all the pieces here. So here's where that uh, that old hard drive is going to go. So here's the old hard drive. That's going to go in here. And you see there's power for it right there. And this is the actual SATA port here. And this just slides right in here. There's a couple of screws that come with the uh, the nuck that go into the sides here to support it. And at this end is, of course, the, uh, the connector itself. Incidentally, just a side note here, the Intel nuck came with um, a heat um, strip, of course, for the SSD that happens to be, uh, you know, in the actual computer itself will be right up against this for, for taking care of heat management. So I'll just put that aside for a moment and I'll show you the motherboard in here and I'll point out a couple of things as we go here. So uh, first of all, um, right here is a Wi-Fi card and you'll see the antenna connectors there. Hopefully you can see those and uh, really nothing for you to worry about there. There's also um, an M.2 connector here and it supports, is it 8022? There's a little screw here that's going to hold that SSD in place right there. There's two slots for, in this case here, I'm going to be using a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, actually, the RAM chips that I, that I have in my, uh, you know, for, that were excess from the uh, upgrade from my for my Dell XPS 15 these are actually rated for uh, higher speed um, it won't matter uh, because of course it'll just downgrade to the speed that this machine is capable of and it'll be fine so there's two ports there and they just click in quite easily so let's go ahead and get started with that I'm just gonna first of all start with the memory modules and you should always be careful uh, I might not be taking all the best precautions available, but uh, just uh, there's a little notch in the SODIM card and they just go in on sort of an angle here. You can see that there and then it just clips in when you press it down. So do the same thing for this one here and we'll pop that in and I'll just show you again. Nice and click. I love the sound of that click. Here's the, um, the SSD, so I'll try to turn this so it's, um, you know, you can see it easily here. This is going to go into this slot that you see right here. I'm just going to push it in, and it kind of remains up on an angle like that. And what you need to do, and this is where magnetic screwdrivers are important, is just hold that down, place the screw in the appropriate spot here, Sometimes I back it up just to make sure I'm in this, the threading properly. And we're just going to tighten that up. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so we have a 512 SSD. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now we're going to deal with the second drive, which in this case is a traditional hard drive. So again, really straightforward here. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but in the very back is the SATA port there, so we just need to uh, line these up accordingly and just slide it in. Try to keep it straight because obviously if you're not straight, um, you know, you might go in a little crooked. It might be hard to move it, but once it's in straight, it just slides right in and just give it a little extra push, I find. You'll know you're, you're okay when the holes in the hard drive line up with the holes in the enclosure, and there's one on this side as well. So I'll just tighten those up real quick. So this is really an advantage for me because if I'm working and my wife wants to, um, you know, see the latest movie um, that we've downloaded, um, you know, and before everyone starts freaking out about piracy and stuff like that, you know, I do subscribe to a lot of streaming services and I do purchase digital downloads rather than DVDs or Blu-rays. 
and of course storing them uh, on the external hard drive was what I previously did. Now it'll all be enclosed in a single computer. Um, and as long as it's running, I'm just going to set it up to just sort of run kind of like a server, although it's just going to be running uh, a copy of Windows 10. And that's another thing I should point out is that because these NUCs don't come with a hard drive in most cases, uh, there's obviously no operating system included as well. But you can usually find um, a copy of Windows 10, um, you know, um, for, for home builders like this. Uh, and I think because this NUC doesn't come with all the accessories, it does qualify for some of the cheaper um, options that are available for buying it, you know, home builders or, or uh, uh, do-it-yourself builders. Uh, so you can pick up Windows 10 for maybe $30, uh, something like that. But certainly you could install Linux or uh, whatever operating system you wish. So I'm just going to make sure that this uh, thermal pad is positioned well. In fact, maybe a good best practice would be to place it on the actual SSD first so that it will dissipate the heat properly. And then now I'm going to reconnect the cables for the S or for the uh, second hard drive in this case here and I'm bringing it backwards so let's do it this way there I think I got it perfect so now we can just pop the bottom in place it does go a specific way so make sure that you're lined up you'll you'll recognize it I think because of where these screw holes are but oh actually there's the clue right on the label it says front with an arrow pointing to the front there. So that's how you know you're in the right position. And let's tighten that up. So the only thing left to do, and uh, full disclosure, again, I've already done this, but uh, the, the thing, of course, you'll need as well, I should have mentioned this right up front, is some kind of thumb drive with a operating system on it to install that. And that will just go into one of your USB ports when you boot up this computer for the first time. And then, you know, most of you, I'm, I'm sure, are familiar with the installing of an OS. So there we go. It's all set up. You can see it's really fairly straightforward to do, if not uh, maybe a little awkward, but otherwise that's fine. Power supply, very similar type power supply uh, that you would expect to find for a laptop so uh, you can use that of course and the usual manuals and so on there's also incidentally for those that are thinking about mounting this to a back of a monitor uh, they provide you with the screws and the plate to do exactly that so you can you can set this up on the, right directly on the back of the monitor and essentially build your own all-in-one computer. I'm just going to leave that for now because it's just going to sit on my desk. And we'll just get rid of the box here and power this up and see how it goes. Um, I bought myself, because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it, but I bought myself one of these Logitech media keyboards. And what's advantageous about this is that there's no need for a mouse. I can just simply use the, uh, the trackpad here. And that might be ideal for the living room when we're watching television. And of course, it uses just one of these uh, USB uh, transceivers as well. So I'm going to plug that directly into the front. In fact, I might even use that always on USB port. And we'll get this set up. So there's the NUC. I've got it, uh, the transceiver on the front there, and the power and Ethernet on the back. Of course, there's room for other things. I'm going to temporarily uh, disconnect the HDMI from my laptop so we can see what's on the screen uh, for this. There's the power supply, and it's just running into my uh, power. Um, adapter or multi-prong whatever you call that thing power bar it's not really a bar it's more of a circle my power circle 
Okay, so there it is. And again, I've got the Logitech keyboard especially for it. I do have to grab my HDMI because my monitor is pretty basic. It doesn't have a second HDMI input. But uh, as you can see on, on my screen here, I've got Speccy running. Uh, just to go over the specifications of this Intel NUC. So it's actually a pretty good little computer. I've installed Adobe Captivate on it. Um, I think I've even installed... Uh, Photoshop so I've got my creative cloud stuff obviously you have to double check with the licensing of whatever software you're running because of course my laptop has the same software running on it, same licenses I think you're eligible for the Adobe software to run it on two machines just technically you can't be using both of them at the same time for two different people uh, I'm just one person so whether I'm using a laptop or a desktop computer I think is irrelevant in this case um, but as you can see here, it's an Intel Core i3. It's running at 3 gigahertz, so it's actually a really fairly fast processor. Uh, you know, if we go into the specifics here, it is only a dual core, but, you know, it seems like it's running really fast. I did some heat uh, checking on it um, using a different tool, Intel uh, Extreme Tuning, just to see what was possible. And even when I'm um, running it under stress, the, the temperatures don't go up very high. So uh, heat management seems to be pretty good on these Intel NUCs. Again, like I said, the RAM is rated for um, a much higher speed than what the NUC is currently taking uh, or you know taking care of. Um, but to my advantage, of course, again, this memory was just sitting around here doing nothing. I didn't want to have to go and buy extra RAM modules uh, just to install for this thing here. So the other thing too, uh, just to do a quick little review, let's go back to the summary. I'm more of a summary person uh, there. So the model I'm actually using here is an Intel NUC uh, NUC 8 i so 8th generation i3 BEH, I believe is the, the model number of the, the kit itself. The motherboard is a NUC 8 BEB. This particular version, um, you know, has the, the room for, um, for both the SSD and the SATA drive. Obviously, if you are uh, like myself and, and installing an operating system on those drives, you'll need, of course, you know, uh, a USB thumb drive to, of course, uh, you know, install that and that will take care of itself. So you can see here, I've got uh, 476 gigabyte PC 401 NVMe SK Hynix. I don't know what this is. 512 gigabyte SSD. And there's the nearly two gigabyte Seagate drive as well. Um, both installed and obviously working well. So um, good deal. It's a great way to get a desktop computer that doesn't take up a lot of space and is relatively inexpensive. So uh, in total, it was about $400, but I had some uh, gift cards that I used online. And I think I only spent um, a few hundred dollars uh, on this computer. So, uh, you know, really a great way to give yourself that second PC uh, for your home office. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.